My name is Maxwell Mensa, and today I'm going to give you a little bit of information about growth hacking. I will be talking about what is growth hacking and how to start growth hacking, the origins of growth hacking, examples of growth hacking, and the conclusion. First up, what is growth hacking? A growth hacker is someone who uses creative, low-cost strategies to help businesses acquire and retain customers. Sometimes growth hackers are also called growth marketeers. But growth hackers are not simply marketeers. Anyone involved in a product or service, including product managers and engineers, can be a growth hacker. And how to start a growth hacking? Well, here's how a company can get started with, a, with growth hacking. First of all, create your product and test to make sure people want it and are willing to pay for it. This will help you gather data so you understand your key buyers, personas, and can target growth marketing tactics accordingly. Update your product at a regular interval and keep getting customer feedback so you always know if you're on the right tack. At the same time, market your product to foster continued growth and track the success of those results. A-B testing and other conversions optimization techniques are crucial for effective growth hacking. The origins. The term growth hacking began in 2010 when Sean Ellis coined the term growth hacker, which he defined as someone whose true commitment is growth and all resources are directed to improving growth potential. The term was expanded by Andrew Chen, who wrote an article titled Growth Hacker is the New VP Marketing. By 2012, Aaron Ginn noted that a growth hacker is considered someone who has a mindset of data, creativity and curiosity in the publication. In that same year, because of Aaron Ginn, Sean Ellis formed a new kind of group with other associates called Growth Hackers. This was a community that offered software as a service which augmented the growth process. Later in 2013, the second annual Growth Hackers Conference in San Francisco produced individuals who had used the technique on social media sites such as Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn and more. This resulted in today's large growth hacking community that has developed to the point where it has become a mainstream of tactic marketing to help companies expand rapidly on the internet. Now I will be talking about two examples of growth hacking used by two successful companies. One of the most popular and known examples of growth hacking is Dropbox. They can provide you with free cloud storage if you can get someone to sign up with you. This means that you are using one product to sell another product which helps redefine the meaning of growth in today's internet world. Another company that most of you know is Airbnb and they also use growth hacking to their advantage. Airbnb has managed to take it a step further even by bringing together technology and clever thinking when they accessed the Craigslist site and brought in their base of support through an automated listening generator called Post to Craigslist. It was a remarkably simple but powerful idea that helped their clients access a powerful website that provided customer support. So both of these companies benefited a lot by using growth hacking in their company. Now the conclusion. At the end, it's clear that using growth hacking can be a great advantage. Without it, some companies wouldn't have grown so much over the years. It's a very useful tool that that allows the company to penetrate the marketing in a way that is beneficial and shows a lot of promise. But I think it is still important for companies to keep remembering that with growth hacking you're not just focusing on a single product but using different products and pushing them to their maximum potential. In that way you can generate the best and highest results from your growth hacking. Thank you for your attention and I hope this information 